Hi there, and thanks for joining. And uh, today's topic, we're going to be discussing salaries for animators and uh, in general, just for 3D animation and whether that's feature, games. And one of the number one type of questions I get from a lot of my students and a lot of people interested in this field is how much do animators get paid? It's kind of a taboo subject, but I think it's something that is very important, whether you're currently working in the industry or looking for your first job. I think it's important to know where the numbers are. Give yourself an idea what you're getting into before you start, if it's going to be enough or if you want more. And when you're negotiating salaries, just to kind of know exactly what is out there and what other people are getting paid. So I have a breakdown here of the Animation Guild, the 2021 wages of the past three years. Essentially what this is, this is just a survey of around 6,000 animators and they kind of take a median pool of, you know, animators that basically state kind of what they're making in the industry. Uh, you can kind of see roughly, depending on your experience level and where you get brought into the pipeline, roughly about how much you're going to be making. So you could take a look at kind of the first top tiers uh, and the lower tiers and you can see roughly what people are making per hour and per week. It's a pretty good amount of money. You can see that even if you're going up to that director level, very incremental in terms of how much you're actually getting paid. It does tend to cap out and you know studios will start to lower wages and lower pay basically for budgets and different projects and things like that depending on how much they can spend for their particular project that you're getting hired for so you know things to think about when you're looking at this scale is to look at you know where you lie in terms of how much experience you have how desperate you are for the job um, these are some of the top tier movie studios out there dreamworks warner brothers disney so this kind of gives you a good idea of how much people are getting paid to work on these movies that you watch whether it's on netflix or disney plus or uh, whether you're still going out to the movie theaters to watch these things these are basically how much these animators are getting paid to work on these projects it's a really high in demand job so if you're down to a couple you know potential candidates you could get basically passed on for the work if you're too expensive and your experience doesn't match up or if your network isn't quite up to par with the other guy that's applying or the girl that's applying so there's a lot of factors into how you can really get top tier pay but this gives you kind of an idea of roughly what an animator makes whether you're an entry level or whether you're just starting out I just did a quick Google search on Glassdoor. This is all information that's available out there, but I think it's important for everybody to break down and understand these individual salaries. And it really is kind of similar across the board, whether you're in features or in games. The salary ranges can range anywhere from 35 to 45 to $65 an hour, typically a 40 hour work week, but we'll get into a little bit later in the video, how you can start making more money with overtime and depending on projects and things to think about. I am going to be basically talking about salaries in California. So if you're working from home or if you're working remotely, which is kind of where the trends are happening right now in 2021, you might even be able to make more money if you're not working in California, the taxes will be different and you still might be making a California salary. I got a couple of friends that are animating and they're outside of the state and they're pulling in more money than some of my friends that are in California just because of the taxes and you know the money just goes a lot further if you're in other states. So there's things to be considering if you're able to work from home or work remotely. You can typically kind of tweak these numbers, but this is the rough estimate of roughly where you're going to be lying in terms of salaries. So you might be wondering, okay, well, how do I know whether I'm a senior level, mid-level, or an entry-level animator? Entry-level animators are pretty much typically going to be those that just graduated, first-time job applicants. And mid-level is going to be whether you have you know, around three to five years of experience. You've worked on a couple games, shipped a couple titles, shipped a couple movies, and you might be considered for a mid-level. If you're in that five to ten year plus range then you might be getting considered for that senior role possibly a lead role and then the senior and lead roles typically uh you know are pretty marginal in terms of differences in pay as we saw in the previous slide so that kind of gives you an idea of the you know rough scale of range you know incremental pay increases depending on your experience and that's typically what you know, the industry averages currently in the uh, field of animation whether it's games or movies the actual range of salaries, so $37 and $52 an hour is really the low end. This is kind of the entry-level to mid-level pay scale, whether you're on movies or whether you're on games. Keep in mind that if you're trying to jump from movies to games or games to movies, you may not be able to do that and maintain your specific job title. So let's say you're a senior animator on movies, you may not get that senior animator role on games just because you're in a different skill set and uh, it could be a little bit difficult. So there are some animators that can hop back and forth. They can go from senior 
animator on a movie and senior animator games just because they've been in the industry for so long. So that's one thing to consider. You can basically kind of double up on projects if you're going to be jumping around, if you're going from contract to contract. Um, this is kind of just roughly the low end part of the scale for how much an animator would make whether you're working games and movies. If you go into the high end here, you're going to get bumped up a little bit more, not drastically more, but a little bit, 56 to $60 an hour, give or take $10 an hour or so is roughly what you're going to be making for a senior to lead level type of animator on a game or on a movie. Obviously there's different scales and this is not exactly set in stone, but this is roughly what you're going to be making if you're an animator on games. Nothing too crazy. It's it's a solid salary. It's a solid scale range. And this is essentially what the going rate is currently in the market, whether you're working remotely or working at a studio when everything's go back to normal. Currently, we're doing a lot of work from home due to the current uh, situation in the, the pandemic and everything like that. A lot of studios are going remotely. A lot of things are going to be changing. So it'll be interesting to see where these rates and how these things apply going forward into the future years. But currently, things are pretty much the same in terms of salaries. Now we want to talk about bonuses. Most studios, if you're a full-time contract, full-time non-contract artist, artist or animator, you're pretty much going to be getting some type of bonus. It really depends on, obviously, the studio. If you're going to be at a studio like Disney, if you're a studio at Infinity Ward, Blizzard, or Naughty Dog, Sony, those type of studios, you may or may not be getting a bonus. And typically, it really depends on what movie title they shipped, were you, you know, how long were you on the project for, were you there from the start, how long have you been with the company, and how is the company doing overall. If the stock for the company is doing typically well, then you can pretty much kind of think that you might be on that upper part of that scale onto that 15 to 20 percent range of a bonus. So for example, Frozen did really well and it was a multi-billion dollar movie and a lot of the artists that were at Disney received close to a 20 percent bonus around 20 grand for working on that film. So it doesn't really matter whether or not the movie, you know, makes an absurd amount of money. Typically, this is the range of bonus that you're going to get unless you're in a special special situation where you've been there for a long time. Typically, this is going to be the the average salary if you were going to join a company you were just doing a great job, the the game or the movie did really well. This is a, roughly around the range that you are going to be getting for your salary. And I basically just put this, it's 10 to 20% of your salary to basically give you that bonus range. After what you really need to consider about that bonus is that it is going to be about 40% taxed on average. So if you made 20 grand, you are going to be making a little bit less than what you would be taking home if you were just making that as a salary. So that's one thing to keep in mind as you take a look at these numbers. You can tack that onto your basically your your gross salary from the previous slide. One other thing to be thinking about is the overtime rate. If you're in California, this is the standard rate for overtime. Now, if you're working in games, basically you're going to get a one and a half times hourly rate if you're going over eight hours. And then if you're working uh, more than uh, seven, if you're working seven days a week, you're going to get that hour and a half paid for that seventh day. If you're working more than 12 hours, you're going to be getting double time. If you're working eight hours on the seventh consecutive day, you'll be at double time. So there's different labor laws out there for, for overtime. I'm just giving the rough California overtime rate. So that's, that's where most of these studios are at. And this is where really this is going to be some of the highest paying salaries as well as some of the highest tax rates. So this gives you a rough idea of what you can be making if you were working at one of these top tier studios. I would say on average, most of these overtime hours are going to be roughly about 10 to 20% of your current working hours. I'm just averaging this in here. So if you were working 10 to 20% of your time at a studio on a 40 hour work week, you'd be, be pulling in uh, roughly around this, this pay scale for that overtime. So I'm just estimating this is obviously a sliding scale, but this can give you a rough idea of, you know, if you were doing about 10 to 15% of your 40 hour work week, working maybe an extra six to eight hours a week with overtime, this is roughly the amount of money you'd be making with your current salary. So you'd have the overtime, you'd have your salary, and you'd have your bonus. But keep in mind, you'd be working a lot of hours. You definitely aren't getting this money for free, and you are going to be getting taxed a lot heavier with this overtime, which typically is not optional. Usually it's going to be mandated by the studio, so you really don't have a choice, and it kind of cuts into any personal projects you might be having or any personal time that you might have outside of work. So it's something to consider. The money does come at a price in a in a way of your time away from home and you know your family if you are looking at the overtime options so one other thing that i want to talk about is the overtime taxes this is from california you can go to a web, any websites out there just kind of fill this in this is again not set in stone but you can see the first 
slide is roughly about $45 an hour. I'm averaging that, that low end scale that we were looking at before. And then you're basically right under hundred grand a year and you're getting taxed about 23%. Obviously the taxes change from year to year, but roughly this is about what you're going to be getting paid for your federal and your state. So one other thing you want to think about too, is if you're on a crunch mode and you're working 40 hours a week, um, you may want to consider how much that's going to be taking into account because your tax rate is going to go up pretty significantly if you are working a lot of overtime and your take home is going to be a lot less. So one other thing that a lot of animators are doing to supplement their income, you can see a lot of these online animation schools. I just want to break down roughly how much those guys are making to add to their overall income. And you can see here that a uh, if you Google any of these animation schools online, they typically charge around $2,000. It's around 11 to 15 weeks of instruction. And then they're going to have an average class size of 10 to 15 students. They usually aren't too large. And then typically teachers are going to get 40% of that sign up. So they're going to get about 40% of that $2,000. They're going to be able to get it per student. Programs usually run two times a year, sometimes three times a year. They'll do a, a, like a little, little shorter version in the summer and they may make a little bit less. I'm just going to go with the fact that let's say you went with a spring and fall type of uh, program and you did it twice a year at that 40% rate of that $2,000 sign up, you're going to be making another nine to $20,000. So you can tack that on to your base rate of what you're typically making for your salary and then your bonus and then if you're making any overtime. So you're making some decent income as an animator. There are a lot of taxes involved so keep in mind these numbers are pre-taxed for the gross and then you're obviously going to be getting taxed a good 30, 20 to 30 percent depending on what uh, price bracket you're in. But that should give you a rough idea of how much a animator is currently making in the industry and kind of give you some idea of what animators are doing to supplement their income. And if that sounds like something you would want to do or something you would want to learn, let us know what you think in the comments. Please go ahead and like and subscribe and we'll be doing more of these videos and talking about what is happening in the industry and seeing what you guys think about that.